For those of you with cats, you know the drama of having to clean out the litter box. It can be a daunting and somewhat stinky task, but we love our furry friends, so we do it anyway. Well, this is Molly. She is 14 and a half years old, and I've had a lot of experience in testing out and cleaning litter boxes over the years, as well as urine and other cat related messes. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my favorite products as well as routines for dealing with kitty litter in the most efficient and effective way. And of course, to keep things not smelling like cat. As you can see, I'm keeping her against her will. So she's gonna hop off my lap at any second. But just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you are a pet parent. I'll also let you know that all of the products I'm gonna be talking about in this video, I will link for you down below. And if you do plan on purchasing them, the links are affiliate links, and using those affiliate links helps to support the Clean My Space channel, so thank you in advance. When we think about products and tools for dealing with kitty litter, there are three broad categories we're gonna cover. There's the kitty litter and litter box itself, there are the tools and the scoops and things like that, there are many of those, and then of course, there's what we use to deal with stains and odors. So when we think about the litter and the litter box, I wanna let you know that I have tested a ton of different types of litter over the years, from compressed newspaper, to corn, to wheat, to crystals, to clay, I've tested it all. The one that I have landed on that I like for two reasons is tofu litter. Yes, I know it sounds wild, and of course, it's vegan. But there are two reasons I love it. First of all, it's really good at absorbing odors and moisture. And second, it helps to take something out of the waste stream, which is disposed of soybean pods, and it turns it into something useful, kitty litter. The brand that I use is called Pedan. It's readily available, and there are a number of different types that you can get, from Pedan with charcoal to Pedan with a urine test, which is actually the one that I get for Molly because she's an older cat. I find it to be priced a little bit higher than some of the cheaper, more readily available stuff like crystals or clay. But the reason I like it, again, is because it really works. And also, when it comes to the cat jumping out of the litter box, the pieces are a little bit larger, so they're easier to clean up and you don't find the graininess getting all over the house. Now, a quick note here, I don't use a litter mat. I used to use a litter mat, and the reason I stopped using one is because I found it was just one extra thing to clean, like, Sure, it traps litter, but then litter still gets outside of it, and then you've gotta clean the litter mat, around the litter mat, under the litter mat, as well as all of the litter that didn't come off on the litter mat. So it's just like one superfluous item that I have stopped using. Now, just like litter, there are tons of different types of litter boxes that are out there, from fancy ones that are integrated into furniture to ones with lids and hoods and plants on top of them. I've seen all kinds. To basic plastic ones, disposable ones, and even stainless steel ones. Well, again, I've tested a ton of them and we did use plastic ones for a while. We would sometimes line the plastic one with a plastic bag, put the litter in there, and then it kind of made cleanup easier. But at the end of the day, my issue with them is that plastic is porous and no matter how many times you clean them and what product you use, plastic will absorb the odor of kitty urine. And if you've ever smelled cat pee before, you know how strong that stuff is. It is not going anywhere. So we actually moved to disposable litter boxes, but you know me, I don't love just a disposable product for the sake of it being disposable. I found something that I felt really good about using. It was a 100% compostable litter box. It was sort of like paper mache, if you will. It was like thick cardboard box mixed in with baking soda and then formed into these big jumbo litter boxes. Nature's Miracle made them. Now, unfortunately, they discontinued them. I have no idea why. It is sad. And the best replacement I found is this brand, but upon ordering them and looking at them, they actually seem pretty thin and flimsy. And I would use these more for a liner to a plastic box than something on their own because I can see very easily an active or thirsty cat would 
pee right through these very quickly. So the plan B, the other alternative that I have found, which is what we will be transitioning to because we just finished using our last Nature's Miracle disposable kitty litter box, is a stainless steel. And I'll tell you the reason I'm going with stainless steel. It is not porous. It is very easy to clean a stainless steel container of any denomination. So I'm going with this because when we empty it out, we can put it in the garage or on the lawn, we can spray it down with water, throw some Dawn dish soap in there, give it a good scrub, and it will come out odor-free, stain-free, and ready to reuse. I do get that it looks a little bit industrial, but maybe you can change your thought on that and say, hey, we moved from white appliances to stainless steel appliances as an aesthetic, so we're doing the same thing with our Unless you want to spend $400 on kitty litter furniture, in which case, be my guest. It's really quite simple in terms of tools. You just need a good kitty litter scoop. And you'll see here, I've opted for stainless steel again. And that's for the same reason that I'm switching to the stainless steel kitty litter box, because it is easy to clean, deodorize, and keep clean. If you have something that's plastic, it's just going to get dirty and smelly over time, and you're never going to be able to remediate those odors. Uh, I like this one too, because it comes with a little hanging hook, which like, let's be honest, you're not gonna hang one of these as decor, but where else are you gonna put it? So, you know what, get this one, it's got the hook, find a little hidden place for it, call it a day. If you have a cat or a dog or a pet, there really are two things that I think you need to do pretty much every day to keep your home smelling fresh. Actually, three. The first one is to scoop your kitty litter box if you have a cat. Second, run an air purifier. You see I have this one going in the back. It just helps to remove odors and impurities as well as any dander that's coming off your pet to keep your air at home smelling and feeling fresh and making your indoor air environment easier for everyone in the house, especially if someone deals with asthma or allergies. And the third thing is to vacuum regularly. You're dealing with hair, with cats, you're dealing with litter. Like I said, we don't use a litter mat, but litter does scatter. It comes off of their paws when they hop out. So it's something that you want to stay on top of. The air purifier that I have is a Dyson. I'll link it for you down below. And I also use a cordless vacuum from Dyson. The vacuums I use are either my Dyson V15 Submarine or my Dyson Gen 5 Outsize. Now we can cover how to deal with odors that come with having a pet or a cat and an open litter box where your pet is doing their business. So the first thing that I recommend are these bamboo charcoal odor absorbing bags. These are so easy. Like they are just a mindless, easy thing that you can do. You can tuck them away in a corner. You can kind of put them around the area where your litter box is. You can even pop these in areas where you keep your cat food, especially if you have smelly kibble. So we used to feed Molly a raw food diet and then she recently had an issue with her pancreas. If you follow me on Instagram at Melissa Maker, you probably saw the story. It was very sad. We weren't sure if she was going to make it. Anyway, she's here. It cost us a whole bunch of money, but she survived. And now she's on kibble, which stinks. So I have a couple of these bags in the drawer where we keep the kibble to kind of manage the odor and it's making a difference. So what's really nice about these is they are an easy to find, readily available product. Um, they're completely non-obtrusive and they last anywhere from two to five years. So you can pick up a bag of, you know, five, 10, 12 of them, whatever the case may be, and just put them in different areas around the house wherever you're noticing odors. When it comes to dealing with odors that your pet leaves behind, whether it's something that you've noticed on a wall, if there's been spraying, on a floor, or if you need to clean your litter box and you're noticing there's a strong odor, the product that I recommend the most to deal with that is an enzyme-based cleaner. And I talk about these all the time here on the Clean My Space channel. And what do I always say? Enzymes have to be specifically designed to deal with the issue that they intend to treat. So Angry Orange is designed to deal with pet odors. In fact, on the back it says, active enzymes attack stains of the source, originally formulated to fight off odors from feedlots and boarding kennels. So that's a pretty intense, stinky place, and your house smells nothing like that, I am sure. So 
I would definitely trust this product to deal with any of my at home pet odor issues. And what you'll do is you'll clean off the mess of the area. So let's say there's vomit or there's a little bit of pee or whatever the case may be. You can quickly clean that off with a paper towel, remove the bulk. Then what you'll do is you'll spray this product on the surface. You'll let it sit for a couple of minutes. And again, the package will tell you how long you should let it sit for. This one says just wipe away. So it actually doesn't even give time. So what you'll do is you'll just spray the product, you'll let it sit for a minute or so, and then you can wipe it away with a paper towel, and then you can just let it dry before your pet goes back, and it's got a nice orange scent to it. There are a couple of other enzyme-based pet products that I would recommend, Rocco and Roxy, Nature's Miracle, but again, I really want you to stick with a brand that's designed specifically to deal with pet odors. Now, if you have a smell and it you can't find the source of the smell but it is driving you crazy you can get yourself a uv light now i'm not going to turn this on because i don't want to blind our camera guy you're not supposed to look at this but if you turn on this uv light uh it's purple just like a uv light would be and you can use it you know kind of like what they use on csi or when they go into hotel rooms and you can kind of look and see what you can find, you will definitely find the source of the odor. And once you find that, you can then spray that area with the enzyme-based cleaner and treat it accordingly. That will definitely help deal with the odor. In terms of a maintenance routine, this is what you should be doing. Scoop the litter on a daily basis. That's just going to help keep the litter box clean and keep odors at bay. Now the litter I showed you is a clumping litter so any liquid that goes in quickly clumps up and is very easy to scoop. You want to give it a little bit of time to kind of clump and dry before you actually go ahead and scoop but you know once a day perfect and I use a paper bag just to scoop and then I can compost it. Quick note do not flush your litter down the toilet that's a really quick way to have an expensive plumbing bill. Now what you can do if needed is you can top up the litter in the litter box if you notice that it's getting low and then you can empty the litter once a month the litter that I showed you is compostable and at that point you can clean out your bin so now I have the stainless steel bin I have the stainless steel scoop you can use that that enzyme-based cleaner, give it a spray, wipe it down, and then you can even scrub it with hot water and some Dawn dish soap. Just use like an iron handle scrub brush that is specifically put aside just for cleaning your litter box. I think this is the perfect task to do in your garage or your backyard. Dry it and then replenish it with fresh litter. You want to make sure that you're vacuuming on a regular basis as well and of course running your air purifier. And if you do all of that, your house should not smell like cat and your litter box box should be clean. And remember, a clean litter box makes a cat really want to use it. A dirty one, well, they will find alternatives. I have been there. And I just want to remind you that all of the links to the products I mentioned are down below in the description box. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is... What kind of kitty litter do you use and do you like it? Let me know in the comments down below. As mentioned, I've tried all kinds of litter, but I love P-Dan. So I'd love to know what you use down in the comments. Also a reminder that you can join the Clean My Space membership program. I've got information on how to do that down below. It is just a really lovely way to show support for the channel. If you'd like to see our video on how to clean if you have limited mobility or chronic pain, you can check that video out right over here. And of course, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.